Hey guys, so um, 6, 13, 23, 10, 30 in the morning, I got the Workers of Missions. And this actually has several subparts because it kept going on for a few hours. So the first is the Mighty Warrior. The second, the Order. Third is the Timing. Then the Mighty Army. Then Focus, and it ends with Understanding. Okay, number one, the Mighty Warrior. Mary is a mighty warrior. Her passion is for all to know me. Her pain is in thinking anyone will perish. She is filled with my compassion. Mary runs head on into what she perceives as wrong. She prays for change in people's lives and she confronts those in error. She does not like confrontation, but her passion that all are in right standing with me supersedes her natural shyness and discomfort with conflict. She becomes overwhelmed with the need to help or speak on my behalf, even when this is uncomfortable. She has learned quickly to give everything to me and allow me to fight her battles. Mary is my worthy warrior. I have plagued Mary with dreams of her missions. She will be equipped with special armor that will allow her to draw to me as many as possible, as well as defend and stay clear of the enemy. She will be pursued at every turn by the enemy, but they will never catch her. Some of her dreams are very puzzling and she wonders their meaning. I give them to prepare the soul for what is to come. When she returns, she will work tirelessly to help repair the church. She will find special people and rescue them. She will share the gospel with all she crosses paths with. When I began giving Mary these dreams, she did not understand they were from me. But over time, she has learned that they are. She used to wonder how she could do any of what these dreams show. She is now willing and will be used to achieve all of these things and more through my power. I have many Marys on the earth, many anointed and faithful who have dreams of future events in which they are in the process of rescuing either the halfborns or the hiders from demons or governments or men and things like that. Some of these dreams seem sensible and some of them very far-fetched. Every dream involving a mission will come to pass. Not all dreams will come to pass but all of the mission dreams will certainly come to pass. If you have these dreams, you will be fit with armor that allows for what you see. You will have teams that you travel with. You will have the opportunity to change the world. Those missions are essential, and this is the most incredible way we will physically and spiritually save others. Those of you with rescue dreams, Rejoice! Your time to begin working is near. Your willing heart is evidence of your love. Number two, the order. First, the anointed workers of missions will come and spread my love and the Holy Spirit across the earth. They will be equipped with teams. Some of the obedient faithful will be on their teams. They will work together to bring the half-borns to me. This will happen very quickly. Then, after the worldwide rapture, many, many of you who are faithful, who also have rescue dreams, will be equipped and returned to earth to help the rebels come to me. Julie, the one before you, will be the leader of the missions. You will report to her daughter, who will know all of your successes and failures, and she will report this to Julie, who will assign you the next mission. Julie will return to Earth for some essential and difficult missions, but most of her work will be in heaven. Our teams, those of you who are called by dreams to work the rescues, will be in teams, and you will work carefully together. After the rapture, there will be darkness. When the rebels begin to cry out, Julie will release teams of rescue missionaries that bear light. They will spread the gospel, the Holy Spirit, 
and light to those that cry out. Very quickly, I will order her to send masses of my rescue missionaries to help rescue the rebels and lead the hiders. Some of you will shelter. Some of you will teach. Some of you will defend. Some of you will hide my new believers. Others will go out and seek people that you are told to find. This will always be done in teams. Some will seek a single person out of a village. Others will convert thousands at a time. Julie will send you out. Very quickly and before the mark of the beast, we will snatch the souls that the Antichrist felt would be his. We will rescue as many as will come. We will rescue all that are not in love with wickedness. It will be a great amount of souls saved for the kingdom. Your willingness to trust me that what you have seen in your dreams will happen and your ability to listen to Julie's voice and obey it with specificity is essential. Once the mark of the beast is complete, the Antichrist will be assured of who are his. He will be sure the armies of heaven are off the earth with no more souls to rescue. But I will send elite forces, special teams of the best missionaries on missions to identify, verify, and take out the wicked people. Many missions will occur after the reign of the Antichrist is in full swing. Some of you have had dreams of this. I have many layers to my plans. Rest assured, those with dreams and visions, that what has been brought to you is of me if it matches these words. You will be required to follow specific protocols and keep information contained to those who need to know. This will require keeping your eyes on me. The training you have been having and will be having in the coming days are to prepare you to keep your eyes on me and to listen to my leaders. Keep your mind focused. Do not lose hope. Look forward to what is to come. Some will do missions with their family. Others will do them with people perfectly suited for the task at hand. We will reach every corner of the earth and we will collect all those who choose Jesus over wickedness. The third one, timing. If you have wisely kept your dreams written, go back through them. Look for details that help you identify if they are pre-rapture, post-rapture, or post-mark of the beast. How, you say? Think of the details. What are you doing in the dream? What is happening around you? If you are serving people food or providing shelter in your own home, and there is an active invasion in the U.S., you are in the pre-rapture period of time. If it is blackness darker than night, it is just after rapture. If you are walking about in a rebuilt world with very modern buildings, it is after the Antichrist is in office. If you are taking down humanoids or taking down dozens of people who live in sin communities, you are in the post Mark of the Beast period of time. Some dreams may be difficult to identify, but I leave clues in your dreams so that now, as I bring forth this idea and you are wondering, you will be able to see what type of mission you are on in the dream. There are one other set of mission dreams that are only given to few anointed. You will notice various periods of time within the same dream. Come to me directly for clarification, for the true interpretation needs to be kept from the enemy. Have hope, dreamers. Those mission dreams are about to come to reality. What about the dreams that are not mission related, you wonder? Some are to warn, some are to inform, some are to reassure, others to encourage. For instance, think of a war dream. If you are on the ground and you view planes dropping bombs, this is a warning that a literal war is coming to where you live. If you are flying above the war, this is a clue that you are viewing this from heaven for that period of time. If you are hiding from the physical enemy and staying hidden, this is evidence that you listened to man over me but repented Although you are being pursued, I will provide protection. If you are home and safe, perhaps providing for others, you are one who is a willing vessel and I will work miracles through you. 
If you are attacked and you disappear and the attacker is baffled, or if their weapon pass through you like a vapor, you are anointed or obedient faithful, and you are on a mission during the war and they have no power over you. If you are walking through walls and flying over people while helping those in the war, you are anointed or obedient faithful and on a mission during the war. If you are training others to use their armor or sending people out on missions or people are reporting to you, you are a leader in the anointed. Can you see how I speak? Are you learning how I show you? Dreamers rejoice. Your time to shine for me with your special skills approaches. Prayerfully prepare. Read my words for you will have full access to all of them like a walking Bible to share with others. The words will stay in your soul and the Holy Spirit can and will access them for use. Trust that I will fit you with the proper team and armor to keep you safe in every situation. Rejoice to be part of the Lord's army. Hear me roar. Our victory is but moments away. When we begin, we only gain momentum. The more I put into the fight, the more of evil's army is sent to the pit and off the earth forever. At each stage, we have more missionaries, more fighters, and more soldiers to bring in my flock. Simultaneously, they will have less and less of an army until their final defeat. Rejoice! The victory is already ours. Prepare for battle. Learn to use your spiritual armor. A holy roar arises. Number four, my mighty army, my mighty army, my Danites. Some of you have been selected to be God's warriors, the tribe of Dan. You will be my special warriors fitted with amazing armor. You will be able to slay all demons, darkness, and evil with almost no effort. Although all of my warriors are fitted with special armor and unique heavenly weapons, you, God's army, will have powers and weapons that can take down darkness with no effort. At times, you will be in tribes with all of your own kind to war. At other times, you will be sent mixed in teams of leaders, anointed, faithful, and you will be their security detail. All missions and all warriors will always have the added protection of my mighty angels. But you, God's warriors, are mighty. You have the inborn natural desire to conquer. This will be turned mightily on evil. Some of you are small people. Others are large and muscular. Your new bodies after, either after your translation or after your rapture, will all be mighty. Have no fear. You will be suited with my power and nothing will be able to conquer you. You will indeed have some fights with the principalities that take effort and are for several days, but you will not tire and you will not lose. Your training is soon coming. Prepare by reading all of the mighty battles in the Bible. Look at what gives them success. It is me behind it all. Look how I provide. You will be a fearless force for me. Number five, focus. Have hope, all of you who are under my wing. You will all have an essential role to fulfill in the end times and for the preparation for the kingdom of Christ Jesus, the one and only Messiah. Keep focused, warriors. This is essential. Now, at this point, I was told to tell you a dream I had back in March, and it's about a soldier in training. Okay, so this is the soldier training dream from March 18th, 2023. Um, I took one of those God-induced naps, you know, the ones where you're like, <laughs> I cannot not sleep. And um, I dreamt of this soldier and he was Hispanic and he had a short military haircut and he was the kind of um, hair that like, even though it was a flat top, it was still kind of curly. So he had very unusual eyes. That was the first thing I was drawn to in the dream. And in his natural state, his left eye, so on his man's power side, his eye was lazy and it would drift to the center. So, but with concentration and focus, he could make his eyes both be dead center. But if he was just being lazy, then it would just drift, okay? He had such unusual eyes that if he wanted to, he could make the eyes go kind of crazy like chameleons and look different directions. So that was very unique. 
Then he was tasked with fighting a villain who was more than twice his size and quite ugly. The villain's source of power was all darkness. He had no rules, no morals, and no ethics. The good soldier was chosen for his faith in the leader of the army. Before fighting the villain, he tried to sample out his strengths and powers, but they were hit and miss. He finally asked what was going on to the leader of the army. He wanted to know why he was chosen and how he would win with these erratic skills. The leader of the army said that he had to sign in before using his skills, as if everyone knew that. <laughs> he would look into a fitted goggle type device. It would only unlock if his lazy eye was directly focused and dead center. And he had to hold it there for several seconds in full focus. Once he signed in, his lazy eye would stay focused or his eyes could be shifted in any direction needed. Then I heard his eyes need to be stayed on God. On the military leader's end, there was a thin see-through digital type floating device that showed the soldier's eyes if they were focused or if they were adrift. It wasn't blue light based like our devices, but white light based and some sort of plasma. Once the soldier signed in, the leader of the army could always see his eyes if they were focused or stayed on God. Once the soldier signed in, the leader of the army could always see his eyes if they were focused or stayed on God. The leader would pour on the power only if his eyes were straight ahead. If his eye got lazy, it would kick him out and he would no longer be signed in. The power being released was so powerful that if misdirected, it could bring unintended consequences. So the goggle device was a fail safe to be sure that only focused soldiers could access the power. I was allowed to watch his training. He had many scenarios that he had to overcome before he was ready for the villain filled with darkness that he was set to fight. When in the fight, the soldier had to do a few things. First, he had to identify what he was fighting. So he had to determine, and this is what I was told in the dream, was it against idols or idol worship? Was it against evil powers or black magic? Was it intended for mercy? which included any earthly provision, healings, etc., anything for humanity. Was it to prove the soldier was truly of God so that the other soldiers would follow him? Then, once the purpose was identified, the second thing he had to do was is figure out which of the different strategies applied. So if it were versus black magic or darkness, Whatever one of God's powers was needed to defeat it had to be identified. And this is how it's identified. This was done by observing if any natural elements had been turned for the use of evil, especially in the capacity to mimic God's power. So if the evil authority over that power that mimics the natural power had to be prayed against by binding it, then God's authority of the same or conquering power needed to be requested or loosed. Then the soldier could wield it in defense. He would then pray for God's power over the same elements to come on him and against them. Now, if it was against an idol or idol worship, then the power that the fake God was supposed to wield was identified. And then the same process was used to pray and bind that power and then to identify and figure out what God's power needs to overcome it. Then the soldier had to pray for all of those that believed in this idol so that their eyes would be open to the truth as the miracle was performed so that they could see that God is of more power than their idol. If the task was for mercy, then it had to be evaluated what the need was not limited to but this is these are the thoughts that came to me with the essence of it was the words i was hearing but i'm sure it's not limited to this but food help in war water shelter life restored 
illness or physical issue healed, salvation from something, physical provisions in any way, and escape for safety. To apply the needed mercy, this is what needed to happen. Then the soldier had to pray and verify if this was indeed something the Lord wanted to use to show his glory. Then he had to verify that God wanted to do this now. Then he would stretch out his hand to the person, the item, or the direction of need and pray that the Holy Spirit fill that thing, that person or elements, with the full power of God and fulfill the requested need. I could see the transfer of power. The soldier was a channel of the power from heaven to the object or person. But I don't think that the bright light coming from heaven and through the soldier would be visible to all. I think I was just being shown how it works. After the prayer and application of the Lord's power, which did deplete the soldier's energy being quite intense, he had to declare publicly that this provision was of God's mercy because he loves his own and provides for his own those with true faith. At times this process was very calm and private and at other times the process was very public in front of many thousands of people. At no time could the soldier allow his lazy eye to unfocus regardless of the pressures around him. If he lost focus and his lazy eye drifted back toward his nose, then he would fail and make the leader of the army look weak. This would be a disgrace. The interesting part is that no matter how big the villain or what his powers, when the soldier dialed in and kept focus, the soldier who was seemingly not an equal contender, as long as he followed the methods he was trained, he could not lose because he had God's power running through him. And not only did it destroy the villain, but it also brought faith to the unbelieving and it shouted of God's power over every element, power, or spiritual fight of this world. Some of his preparations were seemingly insurmountable. Oh, darkness threw rushing water in a 20 foot wave at him, but he was focused. He could hold the water in a wall away from him. He had one villain with ninja-like skills and super sharp handheld weapons, and he was zooming all around this soldier, and the soldier studied the ninja quickly and then attacked with precision and won. There was nothing that could overpower him. I saw many battles and provisions in the practicing. Some were as small as an open wheel, some were as small as an open wound being sealed up. The personal ones of mercy took a lot of compassion and gentleness and they were fueled by love. The ones fighting darkness took an intense amount of toughness and fight fueled by righteous anger and determination. All were only for the glory of God. However, they had different purposes. Some for showing one person God's power. Others for revealing oneself as God's conduit others for fighting against what evil will manufacture. To prepare, these are the things that the soldier had to learn to do. Pre-fight, he had to study the manual before he was allowed to march into battle so he knew every minute thing that he could command. In the fight, the constant thing in every fight is that he had to use full focus. He had three things he had to do, put it before God, bind the mimicking of false power, strongly request God to channel the power through him that matched that need. Then post fight, even though he was exhausted physically, he had to proclaim the power that was from God and how and why he had access to it, which is full faith. Obviously, I think this speaks directly to our new calling into being representatives for God in the rescues, for those of you that have rescue dreams. This dream is like a manual of what to do and say, as well as a warning to well prepare and note the details. Reading the manual is parallel with us in loading scripture right now. Our nearness to God, to learn and hear his voice and stay focused is rehearsal for what is to come. 
I think the patterns of identifying what you are fighting and binding the false powers behind it before asking God for power to come is a key in unlocking success, as is that of staying focused with the whole mind and soul through having their eyes on God. I know some of you just had a little panic attack and you were thinking, I don't know what the spirit behind it is. Chill out. It's okay. In this dream, I knew that if the soldier initially could not perceive the power and identify what was behind it, the Holy Spirit would give it to him. The other thing you need to recall is understand those on missions will have already left the earth and gone to a supernatural training camp where they learn all of this stuff. Okay? So what we know now is a smidgen of what we are going to know soon. And then they will be trained there how to fight against the real enemy. Okay, so that's the dream. And I'll get you back to the prophecy. All of mine, it does not matter what your role. You all are to be suited with my special armor. You will need to understand how to stay focused on me. That focus begins now. What is to come will come with more distractions. Look at me through all that is to come before you are suited in my heavenly armor. Every anointed, faithful, and half-born that comes to me, all will need to learn to focus if not yet mastered. Understand what I show you. Understand what I say. Every command I give has a purpose behind it. Those that immediately obey are noted and selected for use. Be of the obedient. Allow me to use you as a willing vessel. What is to come will be different than anything you have ever considered. My plans are higher than yours. Trust me. I have what is best in mind. Learn to master prayer. Learn to master your Bible. Learn to master trust. Learn to master your obedience to me. Some of you say, I do not want to be a warrior. Some of you fear. Your understanding of war is only what the evil one has glorified. Recall Jericho. Recall Gideon. Recall the armies that were led away from Elijah. This is how I war. You will see miracles and provisions that your brain cannot yet understand. The full display of my might will be on display as you walk obediently to rescue and protect. Number six, understanding. Some of you are confused. You wonder, but I don't understand. I can't tell what my dreams even mean. Remember the purpose of dreams. Not every dream will occur. Only the dreams of missions will certainly occur. If you have mission dreams that you cannot decipher or identify the time period in which they occur, you have three options. First, trust it will occur when it will. Leave it in my hands and wait and see. Second, you could write out the dream and recall as many of the details as possible. Think about colors, odors, time of day, seasons, what people were wearing, what were their attitudes like. Take note of buildings and the like. See if any clues help you understand and identify the timing. Pray about it. Ask me to help you. The third thing. If you still do not see meaning or timing, give your detailed writing to Julie and see what insights she might have. She has been gifted with the same ability to decipher dreams as Daniel. Why do I send dreams to people anyway, you wonder? Hope. When any difficulties arrive before you, with the hope of what is to come, sprinkles of information that help you see some of my mighty plan as assured victory will renew your hope. When my own see the victory already in hand, hope is the result. All of heaven is rejoicing. The long-awaited victory for the house of God. Rejoice! Keep your focus on me through the storms and keep your hope up. We are the victors. Never lose sight. God, I hope you find that encouraging and see you next time.